Hi, welcome to yet another very interesting case. She is a 60-year-old lady who has presented with phacolytic glaucoma and she received treatment for it. But the cataract is extremely different. You can see the entire lens bag is empty. All the lens matter in the cortex is absorbed. And there's only one tiny nucleus sticking in the inferior aspect of the bag. So planning a surgery in this eye is quite tricky. So let me go through the points which are ringing in my head at that point. The first one, can I save the bag? I don't know the status of the anti-capsule, post-capsule, health zonules. Number two, it looks like the anti-capsule and the post-capsule are fused together. Can I inflate the bag and can I open this up? Number three, these eyes, the post-capsule will be extremely thin and the chances of post-capsule rupture are extremely high. And of course, the entire zonules will be very weak and the bag itself could be very floppy. So there would be a risk of uh, this becoming a totally intracapsule extraction. So these are the things which are running in my head and I had multiple plans ready to deal with it. So I was having all the necessary OVDs to inflate the bag. I was ready with a CTR if needed to support the bag in the case of zonal weakness. And in worst case scenario, if I lost the bag, then I also had an iris claw lens as a standby ready. So with all these things planned, uh, let us begin the surgery. The surgery is being done under post-subtenance anesthesia. 1.5 ml of lignocaine is injected in the inferior middle quadrant. Uh, the side ports are made and uh, the capsule is stained. The chamber is inflated with OVD. Consciously, I've decided to make a scleral incision. Reason being simple, in the event where I lose the bag and I'm forced to use an iris fixated lens, since the iris clip lenses would be rigid lenses, I would just widen the scleroconial tunnel and then use it to implant the rigid lens. So that was the plan here. The first thing I was focused on was to just know the status of the zonules. So I was very curious how the anti-capsule and the zonules would react when I puncture it. So I'm using a sharp 26 number needle to puncture the capsule and try to raise the flap. I could raise the flap now, but at that point, I can clearly see these radial folds in the posterior capsule along with these few elchnik pearls. And I could see that the anti-capsule and the posterior capsule are fused in most of the quadrants where the nucleus is not there. So before I even begin my rexus, I needed to ensure that the anterior and the posterior capsules are separated from each other. So I come back and I'm using sodium hyaluronate, slowly injecting into the capsular bag through the opening which I've created. Now this heavy viscoelastic gradually spreads across and separates the posterior capsule from the anterior capsule. Well, it's almost like reforming the capsular bag. I'm still not sure how healthy the posterior capsule is because it would be very thin and vulnerable for a tear. So while injecting OVD, I'm also very skeptical that is there any pre-existing tear? Am I going to enlarge it? So these are the things which are actually running in my head. So thankfully the bag could be formed pretty well. I'm then falling back on my rexus forceps. This is the uh, Haldi Puka forceps. Just hold the flap and very carefully begin to fashion the rexus. At this point, I'm very anxiously noting the edge of the tear as it is being torn. I'm searching for any folds beside the tearing edge which would indicate uh, lax anterior zonules. Thankfully there isn't much which was very obvious. And I'm planning to make 4.5 to 5 mm rexus. I think the rexus is a slightly smaller one, but uh, given the situation which I am, I will take it. The next thing is, I would like to assess the status of the posterior zonules. As I'm injecting uh, the OVD again into the bag and nudging the nucleus, I can see on my right hand quadrant, the definite zonular weakness is there. So we can just zoom in and see that in slow motion that uh, this part of the bag is pretty weak. And in my past experiences in these long-standing hypermature cataracts, I've also encountered the pre-existing posterior capsule defects as well. I'm just trying to search for it. I'm nudging the nucleus around. The PC tear is not visible. So at this stage, because the zonular laxity is quite evident. When I'm trying to just tap the nucleus around, I can see that the bag on the right hand side is extremely weak. So I thought this is the right time to stabilize the bag. Uh, the goal is to stabilize the right side of the capsule bag here, which is indicated by the arrow. This is the area which is having gross zonular laxity. 
So I'm going into the standard CTR that is 1113 and gradually it is threaded in. It's important to ensure that the bag is completely inflated so that we don't put any stress on the already flimsy posture capsule. As I begin insertion of the CTR, the nucleus is turning vertically and the insertion of CTR is being obstructed by it. And because it's a small nucleus and it is tilted upside down, there is no space for me to negotiate the ring. And as I'm trying to nudge it, the apart from obstructing the insertion, it is also causing stress on the poster capsule and the bag. The nucleus is pushing the poster capsule and the bag. So I was concerned by forcibly manipulating the ring inside. At this stage, I shouldn't damage the poster capsule or the zonules. So I just stopped there for a moment and then using the sense cue and just maneuvering the nucleus trying to flatten it out so that the insertion of the ring is not hindered. Once the nucleus is lying flat rather than being vertical as it was in the previous scenario, now the ring could be maneuvered without any stress on the bag. I can clearly see that the area which is weak is well supported as the last bit of the CTR is gently dialed in. So now we have a bag which has an equatorial 360 degree support by the CTR. So the safety margin is tremendously increased. But to fake with the nucleus again, the bag could be flimsy and it can come up. So at this stage, I thought I would prolapse the nucleus into the interchamber chamber and then FACO. But I thought a better idea would be to use the IOL scaffold technique. So I decided to place the lens into the bag. So in this patient had already kept the option of both multi-piece and single piece lenses. I chose the single piece lens to be injected into the bag. This is a hydrophobic lens. The lens gently unfolds and settles itself into the bag. So now with the bag and the poster capsule being very well supported by the lens, I will be very much comfortable in doing the fake emulsification. The coil endothelium is anyway coated with the dispersive OVD. And that's going to provide enough protection even though I'm emulsifying the nucleus in the antechamber. So using the right parameters, the small nucleus is uh, emulsified without any chopping maneuvers. The OVD both in front is removed and also some of the cortex which is there inside. So this was a very interesting case and uh, these are the cases which actually give you a sort of a kick when you do it. So to summarize, I think uh, planning was critical. I was ready with all the options. But some of the key steps which ensured a successful implementation and outcome in this patient would be these. I think the first important point would be to imagine and suspect that the ant and the posterior capsule could be fused together. So if once we realize that, we take adequate measures to inflate the bag using the right OVD. So using sodium hyaluronate was again an important thing which created the space and also maintained it. The third critical aspect was to diagnose the zonular weakness at as early as possible because if we can diagnose it early then we take the right decision of introducing the CTR and stabilizing that part. And fourthly, because the emulsification had to be done in the antechamber, using the IOL scaffold technique to just safeguard the capsular bag was uh, the finishing touch. So the message is if you anticipate things well, you can plan it. And if your planning is good enough, most often than not, the implementation would be fine. And of course, we need to be a little bit lucky. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.